Hey guys, uh, nice to be here for this week's Oxen Labs update. Uh, on the session side of things, this week we've been working on a number of tasks which are kind of running in unison. So we've got Emoji Reacts, um, which we have been working on and is getting closer to being finished. Um, we're basically at the stage where we may be changing some of the way that um, Emoji Reacts uh, interact with the session open group server. Um, to make deletions easier because previously you'd have to kind of batch deletions together and then if you had a lot of deletions you wanted to do for Emoji Reacts um, that could get cumbersome so we may be changing uh, the way things work there but the UI um, and the basic one-to-one -one and closed group experience um, seems to all be working uh, pretty well so we're just getting to the final stages of that and, and making some tweaks here and there. Uh, the database uh, refactor on iOS, we're still working through. Um, we actually, I migrated my device last week and a couple of other devs in the office did as well. Um, so that's the first time we've kind of done migrations on uh, li live devices um, and it went fairly well. We're just patching up a few um, kind of bugs there to do with notifications and some performance issues as well, which we're fixing up to make sure that it's analogous to what we had before. Um, we're also working on a few other things, um, Locanate integration um, being one of them into, uh, into session, so that's kind of um, chugging along at a decent pace, and then there's theming as well, um, which we've been doing on the side as well. But that covers most of what we've been doing um, on the session side of things. Uh, on the Locanet side of things, we have been struggling additionally with Mac, um, as we have been for the last couple of months. Um, but Jason has a build working with a manual process right now um, and we're just tr trying to get the final, um, we were trying to automate the build process um, with some of our other um, Electron things that are released on Mac but we weren't able to get that um, working this week so we're just focusing right now on the LokiNet um, GUI builds which we're fixing up a few things um, with Mac for. And we're also making some progress on um, stuff that will be in the next uh, LokiNet client release too. Um, on the Oxen core side, we have had a few struggles this week with the wallet releases. So there was a few wallet releases that went out over the weekend and on Friday, um, patching up a um, bug that Ian McDonald found, which was essentially that the contribution or the contributor amount um, or the amount of max contributors that you could have in a node was not set correctly in the last release. So we've been working on fixing that up. Um, and yeah, we just had a few releases. So that's um, been the main thing that the, uh, the, the core devs have been working on, but we're also fo focusing on back onto Wallet3 and uh, doing some design work to understand where we want to go next um, with Oxen Core for the next big feature that we work on. Um, so yeah, that wraps up about the distinct teams. I'll uh, throw it over to Josh for the next section. Thanks. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Josh again this week for the marketing update. Uh, hopefully you'll see him next week, but you're just going to have to deal with me for now. Uh, so we've been working on some extra content strategy, kind of new thinking about how we handle our content. Uh, so we've got this uh, running theme at the moment going around uh, session and it being an app that you might be able to use for dating uh, or for communicating with your partner or other intimate kinds of relationships. Uh, so that's going really well. I had an article of my own published uh, already earlier this week. Wes is going to have another one coming up soon. We'll have some videos as well around these topics coming out. Uh, and Cam has been smashing it on the socials too. He actually ran a poll on Twitter, which I know is not necessarily the most kind of scientific way to gather this data, but there were over 400 people who responded uh, and almost 40% of people said that they had used Session at some point or another uh, to communicate with an intimate partner. So I think that's a pretty significant number and shows that this really is one of uh, the most important and sort of one of the widest use cases for Session. And it's not one that we've really talked about a lot before. Often we get really caught up with the technical side of things uh, and talking about you know like at-risk communities and things like that uh, but talking about those regular everyday people having those regular everyday conversations is really important as well uh, so hopefully we'll get some good cut through with this content we've got some, some bigger stuff coming up as well uh, which will also kind of touch on uh, this concept of session and dating uh, so keep an eye out for some more of that kind of stuff uh, we also had a video that Tom and I worked on uh, on comparing session IDs and phone numbers. 
Uh, so as probably most of you watching this video know, session IDs offer a lot of advantages over phone numbers, but not necessarily super clear to a lot of people why they're looking at this huge long string of numbers instead of just, you know, the phone number that they're familiar with. So uh, that was a really good piece of content to get out and it was paired with an article that I wrote and published uh, last week. So if you want to read it, you can go and check that out or the video uh, is sort of a more digestible way to get that information as well. So make sure you go and check that one out. Sam has been working with some researchers who are doing research into the decentralized web. Uh, now these researchers are kind of from the civil society space, so it's really cool to see uh, that we've been noted as one of the foremost, I guess, authorities or um, experts uh, in the civil society kind of space. Uh, specifically when it comes to decentralized technology and the decentralized web. So they had a lot of really broad, uh, wide-ranging questions that they were asking us. I actually was talking with Sam about it uh, last week a little bit about how we would respond to some of those questions. Uh, but it was really good to see uh, that they came to us uh, and we've been working back and forth to make sure uh, that uh, the quotations that they're going to put from us, from the OPTF, uh, into the research will really accurately represent our view of the industry and the space and the technology and how it's all progressing. So really cool uh, to see that kind of stuff coming through. Uh, on Connor's side of things, he's been working on some UI for channels uh, in sessions. So when I say channels, I mean uh, those one-way channels like the session updates channel where you know you can post out but no one can necessarily reply or you can restrict who is able to reply or post uh, in that in that channel. And so he's been working to create a UI that's going to make it really clear how those actually work, how they're different to just your normal open groups. Uh, so that should be coming along pretty soon. He's also jumped back onto merch. So there's going to be some session merch uh, that he is designing at the moment. He was working on it a couple of months ago, but he got really distracted uh, with a big UI UX sprint um, that he's been doing for quite a while now, uh, which has eaten up a lot of his time. Obviously you've seen a bunch of the designs he's been working on and they look awesome so it was definitely work that paid off but it meant that that merch stuff got put on the sidelines a little bit for a while but he's back on that now and he's super excited to work on it so I'm sure he's going to have some super cool stuff to show you pretty soon. Hopefully we'll be able to get some teasers to you soon because I've seen a couple of things already. We're not ready to show them to you just yet but they look super awesome. Uh, and the other thing, the last thing that I'll mention is Chris he has been working on offering support in languages other than English. Um, obviously, most people are going to be able to, um, it's going to be a lot easier for them if we're able to offer support uh, in the native language or in a language that they're more confident in uh, if they are speaking English, uh, if English is an additional language for those people. So uh, we really want to look and see how we can actually achieve that. Obviously, machine translations. Uh, are not ideal and have some issues, but at the same time, the benefits that you do get from offering those other uh, support in those other languages is extreme. So uh, he's been looking into that a lot. Um, he's done a bunch of the research to show that it really is a worthwhile pursuit, even though it's going to take a fair bit of effort. Um, but yeah, so that's the last thing for marketing this week. That's pretty much everything for now, uh, but we'll see all of you next week, or Josh will see you next week. See you, everybody.